I think this field of research is exciting for many reasons. Uh, one is it brings together very recent advances in technology, uh, the availability of germ-free animals with, with genetic mutations, um, the sophisticated uh, technology for identifying bacteria uh, that are in the gut, um, and to carefully analyze them. That, together with a growing clinical awareness of the importance of the microbiota, I think makes this a fascinating and rapidly growing field that brings clinicians and basic scientists together. My research focus uh, is on how the intestinal microbiota influence the brain and behavior. So this has its origins clinically in patients who have severe liver disease, who often go into coma, and it has been known for many years that if you give oral antibiotics to these people, they wake up. So there is a communication. Um, now we are in a position to try to understand the mechanisms. And so our research has really been uh, two, two, in two areas. One is to take germ-free mice and to study the brain and to study their behavior. And we find that germ-free mice behave very differently from normal mice. They take a lot of risks. Uh, they do not have a good memory. But when we put the bacteria back, they behave normally. So our bacteria, it's in their interest to educate us not to take too many risks so that we can all survive. The second area is where we take uh, adult mice with a stable microbiota, and then we perturb the microbiota with, for example, antibiotics or a change in diet. And we find that very small, very subtle shifts in the microbiota are sufficient to cause changes in brain chemistry and in behavior. We can change mood. And we have done experiments with fecal transplantation uh, between different mouse strains that have different behavioral characteristics, genetically determined. So we can take a very calm mouse and put uh, its microbiota into a mouse that is usually very aggressive and it becomes more calm. Or we can do the opposite, take a mouse that is uh, calm, give it the microbiota from a, mou a mouse that is genetically determined to be more aggressive, and we get the opposite changes. Well, uh, I think that it's going to start to explain a number of things uh, that we didn't, uh, we didn't understand before. So obviously, in addition to um, a better understanding of resistance to infection, a better understanding of things like uh, body mass, obesity, and so forth. I think in the context of my field, uh, which is in gastroenterology, many people who have gastrointestinal conditions also have psychiatric disturbances. And we never understood why this was. We thought it was because maybe this was more important and they were imagining this. Now we know there is dysbiosis here, and from our work, we think that this dysbiosis may actually be a factor that contributes to the psychiatric problems. So it's possible to treat the microbiota and improve both things.